Hey there, nation. Welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures board gaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Chief Skate. And as you saw in that little introduction that we just did, this is a hobby side video that is dedicated to Vince Ventrilla's current topic of the week, which is evocative rules, all right? And basically, what he's talking about is rules that pretty much just define the essence of a thing inside of the war gaming world, especially when it comes to different war games, because there are special rules or game mechanics that you see in games that pretty much just define whatever it is that you're playing, all right? So these are things like special rules for different and races in the games, or maybe it's a game mechanic of some sort dealing with magic, or the case may be. He actually does a very good job explaining the uh, what an evocative rule is for a wargaming system, and this is my response to it. And the reason why I kind of did like the little static intro earlier for the video is because it was to represent that the orcs and goblins have hijacked the hobby side uh, video for this one. Because in my opinion, one of the most evocative rules that ever came out for Warhammer especially was for the orcs and goblins, and that, uh, that rule was the animosity rule. In my opinion, the animosity rule for orcs and goblins is the most meta special rule of all time inside of a wargaming uh, inside of a wargaming system. And the reason why I believe this is because the animosity rule, while many people might think of it as being a handicap, it actually did a lot to define what the army is about. It did a lot to define how players play this army, how the army interacts with other armies in, on the battlefield, and when you play on the battlefield, and a lot of things that do with just the entire flavor and and texture and. I'm, now I'm starting to sound like I'm talking about food. But it had a lot to do with the actual qualities and the characteristics of the army that you're playing for Warhammer. Now, for those of you who may not understand, who may not know what the animosity rule was, in the uh, fantasy battle edition of Warhammer, what the animosity table was that you, when you had your forces laid out in an Orc and Goblin army on the battlefield, at the beginning of your turn, you had a roll of D6 for each one of your units. And I believe this is the same rule that they use since uh, time immemorial, all the way back in 4th edition of Warhammer, because I remember when this rule was being used in 4th edition, I think they used in every edition since. So like you, like I said, you put your units on the battlefield and you roll a D6, and every single time you rolled a 1 for uh, one of your units, uh, they filled their animosity test, which means that you had this little table that you had to look at to see exactly what would happen. So things that could happen were things like your unit was too busy, members in your own unit were starting to fight one another, so because that you can't do anything with that unit for the turn, they can't move or shoot or do anything. Another one could be that maybe they start shooting their missile weapons at another unit altogether because they're angry at them, or in some cases they would like move forward, or in some cases they would charge forward towards an enemy, you know, to prove that they're the best. So it really threw a lot of wrenches and a lot of gears and a monkey wrench inside of plans for people when they're playing the Orcs and Goblins armies. Now, while it may sound like a handicap, to play this army because of animosity, it actually isn't. If you think about it, it does actually a couple things for you. It, yeah, there's some negative side effects, but it also opens up a whole new way of playing the game and playing your army. And I think that's the reason why this animosity rule is so important because it pretty much does really three things for you uh, as an Orcs and Goblin player. I'm gonna talk about that here in my next slide. All right, so why is the animosity rule such a meta special rule for Orcs and Goblin? Because it does three things. One, the animosity rules, in my opinion, just helps to define the lore of playing Orcs and Goblins for Warhammer and Orcs and Goblins in general. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit more detail, but it's very indicative of what an Orc and Goblin army would have in it. It'd be like the typical issues that they actually face in everyday reality of just being alive as either an Orc or as a Goblin and the kind of realities you have to deal with. And it's very, very lore heavy that way, and it's kind of fluffy in the way that it kind of addresses that for a gaming system. The second reason why the uh, lore is uh, the, the, the animosity rule is so important is because the impact it has on game mechanics, so the actual gameplay that you actually play with your army. Not only does it impact the game mechanics, it also kind of uh, affects the way you play the army. All right, and it has a lot to do with what you decide to do, both in terms of strategy, in terms of tactics, and how you outfit your army, and what you do with your army, and things of that nature. It has a really, really big impact on game mechanics, and uh, that's the second reason why animosity is such an evocative rule. And then finally, the third reason why animosity is so important for an Orcs Goblin player, because it gives you the excuse to play for fun. With such a huge handicap against you with a special rule for your army, because when it comes to special rules, in most cases the special rules is supposed to make your army better. Well in this case, the special rule for your entire army actually makes things worse for your army. So because of that, this is going to give you kind of an excuse just to play for fun, and because of that, it kind of changes your attitude about wargaming with an Orc and Goblin army and playing games and playing battles with this army because, you know, with such a handicap on your side, you actually have a really good excuse just to play just for the heck of it and do whatever the things you want to do on the battlefield just because, you know, why not? And I'll get a little bit more in detail about these three points when we get into it. So the very first thing we're going to talk about is how animosity is such a meta rule and such an evocative rule and stance of lore real quick. All right, so the first thing is the lore. Now the reason why animosity, in my opinion, is such a meta uh, special rule and why it's so evocative of a war game 
is because of the lore of orcs and goblins. When you look at orcs and goblins, every know, everyone knows exactly what you're talking about. You're talking about these big, brutish creatures called orcs and small, little, diminutive ones called goblins. And everyone knows uh, when you think of these creatures, they're not exactly organized. They're not in exactly intelligent. You know, they may be cunning and they may use some tricks and some, ta you know, sneak attacks to attack you. But these are not great scholarly peoples that are thinking about like the greater questions of life, right? It's not like you're seeing orcs and goblins sitting around having existential crises uh, amongst themselves, asking the deeper questions of why they exist, right? And not only that, but when they fight and stuff like that, they, they're really strong, they're really tough. They're not very skilled fighters. They more like hack and slash and, you know, backstab in order to get to you and stuff like that. And because of that, there's also very undisciplined because they're not very intelligent. They're very, very ill-disciplined. And in fact, most of the time, orcs and goblins are just as happy fighting each other as they are fighting other races, right? It's not like when you hear about orcs and goblins in fantasy stories, you don't see them building huge empires for the larger part of most of the lore, right? They're not building huge, continents-wide uh, uh, empires are trying to forge, you know, some great civilization. You know, they're just out there like as this all-consuming force of destruction that just kind of runs around to destroy things because either they're bored or, you know, that's what they're pretty much doing this. And this lore about the animosity, you see this all the time. You see this in movies and in video games and in fantasy stories since time immemorial all the way back to Gerald Tolkien. You know, who started using these guys in, in fantasy stories and, and as you see in mainstream fantasy stories, you know, in time and memorial ever since then. And so that is why I think animosity rule is kind of important that way. And why it's such an evocative rule, because it's just something you imagine in your back of your head when you see orcs and goblins. Now, like World of Warcraft, for example, or the Warcraft series of games by Blizzard Entertainment, you could argue that, well, the orcs in that game system are trying to build a nation, they're in other nations, they're trying to conquer things. But at the same time, if you look at some of the backstories about their special characters they have in those games and the things that they do to each other, you know, they're always fighting one another. They're always backstabbing each other, trying to undercut people. And they have to rely on basically singular individuals who are just the toughest, meanest, baddest dudes around who can forge an army or forge a nation to like carry out their plan and that's what they do for the most part and I think that that animosity rule kind of helps kind of show that in a, in, a, in, a, in a in a tabletop miniatures game because you can actually see that either they're either they're really with it and things are going according to plan or things just break out awry because you know the ill-disciplined nature of orcs and goblins are just kind of like handicapping themselves so that's one of the reasons why I think it's such an evocative rule system it has to do with the lore of orcs and goblins and speaking about how it acts as a handicap, we also have the game mechanics in uh, Orcs and Goblins Army. Pretty much, when it comes to the game mechanics of Orcs and Goblins, when you're playing Orcs and Goblin Army on the battlefield for Warhammer, your army will either do one of two things. Either one, it will totally steamroll your opponent and just absolutely just destroy your opponent flat out, this unstoppable wave of destruction. Or you get routed pretty bad and you lose horrific casualties and you just get your butt kicked by your opponent just kicks your butt and you're just absolutely defended. There is no real middle ground for an orcs and goblin army. Either either you're dominating or you're losing really, really bad, right? And that's because it kind of just kind of shows the randomness of how an orcs and goblin army works out because like I said, they're not exactly well disciplined. Uh, they don't really have a grand, you know, grand scheme or plan in mind. They just kind of get in and just start fighting. And plus, the animosity rules also kind of helps you with your game mechanics too, because as long as your units are unengaged in close combat, um, they're subject to the rules of animosity, which means if you roll a one on a d6, you know they'll start doing something negative that you don't want going on for your army. However, according to the game mechanics, so long as your orcs and goblin units are engaged in close combat, like they've literally charged across the battlefield and they're fighting somebody, they can't be affected by animosity. So what this does for you as a player, it kind of forces you not to think too long about how to play your orcs and goblins using clever maneuvers and clever strategies and, you know, attacking and flanking and, you know, routing your opponents and, you know, you're trying to gamesmith the game by using clever maneuvering and tactics to defeat your enemy. That's, that's not going to happen in an orcs and goblin army. You don't have time to worry about that you have to get your forces committed as quickly as possible because if you don't you know they're gonna you know they're gonna mess up and they're gonna eventually like you know handicap themselves with an animosity it results so because of that you want to get your army stuck in really quick and narrative speaking that's the way orcs and goblins kind of operate that's how they do their thing they, they look for an enemy there's no second guessing or some kind of clever manipulation of what they're trying to do they just nope there's the enemy we go to them we fight them and that's how it works because that's what orcs and goblins do best especially orcs goblins you might be able to do some cunning kind of tricks and tactics and stuff like that like laying traps or flanking or backstabbing somebody that's where your more clever you know strategy goes but in the in the end though we're not talking about some great grandiose napoleon style tactics here 
with goblins. We're just talking about like some low down dirty tricks and cheap shotting your opponent because that's what they do. And so because of that, it has a really huge effect on the game mechanics. It just kind of shows you the essence of what this army is all about. It's there to commit your forces, try to dominate in close combat, you know, try to use some cunning and some backstabbing trickery for goblins because that's all you can really do with this army. Because if you try to do anything clever, like playing like how I always play, it's really not going to help you out too well. It's just, it just doesn't work out that way. So because of that, it's pretty interesting to see how like how that rule kind of shows like that narrative idea of how orcs and goblins should fight and be. That narrative transfers from the narrative lore and is actually applied in the actual game itself because that's how animosity rules work. And then of course, the very last part we're going to talk about is how it impacts your ability to play just for fun. All right, and the last way that... Animosity is such an evocative rule set is the excuse for you to play just for fun. All right, it does, that's exactly what the animosity rule does for you. It basically just lets you play an arc goblin for fun. Because if you've ever been on tournaments before to see armies that you see on tournaments for the most part, um, there are not very many orcs and goblins players actually playing on the tournament scene with that army because like I said before, the animosity rules can kind of hurt you. And orcs and goblins are a very random army to begin with. A lot of their spells, a lot of their special effects, they're all based on random die rolls and values. And so because of that, it's not as consistent, so it's kind of hard to rely upon the consistency of this army to do well in tournaments right and and the armies that are in tournaments when you look at them they're usually made up of these really hard choices or these really you know you know armies or units that do not you have to worry about using animosity for the most part so because of that it's not really like playing the same way like you normally would if you're just playing normal orcs and goblins so because of that um, you don't see it really so much for the um, on the tournament scene so because of that the reason why you play an orcs and goblin army is because you're playing just for fun for one thing, it gives you an excuse for paying badly, all right? So if you're a really novice player or you don't really know how to play too well, if you play Orcs and Goblins and you do very bad in the battlefield and, and you will, you know, have a lot of losses playing an Orcs and Goblin army, it gives you an excuse for playing badly because your opponent's just going to assume that the reason why you did bad is because, oh, you're playing Orcs and Goblins. They have the animosity rules. Don't feel bad about it, man. You know, if I had to worry about my army, you know, punking out one-sixth of the time, you know, I'd be badly too. So it gives you an excuse to play badly, you know, like committing, you know, committing a unit of goblins into something that they should have no business fighting against because you know you don't want them to fall for animosity or whatever you know that'd be the example of how you know you can play badly for it as well and like i also say too it also gives you an excuse for losing as well because if you do lose which is my second point if you do lose then no biggie because you know you're playing arc and Gown army so either you're doing very very well or doing very badly so because of that you know if you do lose oh well it's just the way the nature of the beast is and that's how it works when it comes to orcs and goblins and probably the most important reason how animosity is a, in a an evocative rule and a very meta rule for orcs and goblins it gives you excuse to have fun with it because orcs and goblins like i said before they're not the really the deepest thinkers or the most you know you know disciplined of armies so if you want to take like a little goblin for example like a goblin a general or lord class character and then kid him out with like all these combat things like a combat weapon magical armor and an enchanted item that boosts his strength or whatever and put him on a monster and just send him charging directly into the middle of your enemy's army you can do that you can do that if you want to because you know heck you're playing orcs and goblins that's what they do anyways so you know consequences be forgotten you just throw a caution the wind just go at it right you want to send like 40 goblins to their death being shot to pieces by bows and arrows and cannon and stuff oh well we you know we got a thousand more where they came from right or if you want to send your or your orcs charging headlong into this kamikaze mission right into the middle of your enemy's army because you need to break something by all means do it because there's no reason why you wouldn't because you're playing orcs and goblins so these are the some of the reasons why animosity is kind of a good thing because you know you're just playing for fun at this point because you're just doing it because you're having a blast and since all of your values and all of your effects are so random and you can't count on those you know random effects you know helping you out then go ahead just just you know do whatever you want because it doesn't matter because it's not really in your control anyways and i wouldn't have it any other way to be perfectly honest all right so finally that is my response to vince Petrillo's evocative rules for the week uh, animosity in my opinion it is the most meta rule set and to be perfectly honest with you guys, I actually missed the old animosity rules for orcs and goblins. Um, nothing gets Age of Sigmar, but when you look at the destruction forces for Age of Sigmar, you really don't see this animosity rule anymore for goblins, or sorry, not for goblins, for grots, or git mobs, or or uh, iron jaws, or for the uh, uh, just regular uh, bone splitters. There is no animosity rules anymore for those guys. They do keep the randomness of some of the rules, like for spell effects and things. Uh, they still keep that around and they also give you bonuses for if you have more troops to represent that have like there's mobbing up on you and you get bonuses to hit or bonuses to wound because 
you're either attacking from the flank or the rear or you have 30 plus models in your unit or whatever so you do still see some of those aspects of it but as for the random zaniness of what animosity is you really don't see that too much in age of sigmar and so because of that it does kind of, i do kind of miss it because it does make your armies in the destruction order uh, destruction forces it makes them kind of predictable like you have an idea of what you're looking for in your armies like iron jaws you know they're really brutal and fighting and you know have really high armor saves savage orcs are great monster hunters you know i don't know what the new rules set coming out with the gloom spike grots if they're going to be any different than they were in other editions of uh, age of sigmar if they'll have the animosity rule or not what is it the wait to see if that happens but for the most part though your armors are kind of more predictable and it kind of takes away the zaniness of playing an orcs and goblin army because when you play an orcs and goblins that's why you're playing it you're not playing necessarily to win all the time you're playing it because it's just a blast to play and you don't know what's going to happen but anyways that's my response for the topic of the week as always you guys please feel free to like comment and or subscribe you guys input is valuable to us as always also check us out on facebook instagram google plus as well as blogger.com for all latest greatest news about hobby that's good for this one you guys you guys stay classy we will catch you guys in the next one peace out you guys